We just thank you for this opportunity to, to worship you, to come into your presence and just take a break from our busy lives, our busy weeks here on this midweek Wednesday and just enter into your presence. Lord, we're just humbled and thankful. God, we are your servants. We are blessed to co-labor with you. Lord, we just ask that you would equip, equip your ladies tonight, equip each and every person here, each and every person that's listening online to be better co-laborers with you, that you would open our spiritual eyes and ears and heart. And we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would just speak directly to each and every person hearing this message, that you would individualize the words to penetrate their heart just the way it needs to be touched. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. So at our last Empower, we, we talked about the importance of verbally coming into agreement with God's will. What his plans are, his purposes are for our life, our families, our church, our communities. How important it is to use our role as an heiress, as a daughter of the king, as a priestess, and to verbally make those decrees that the will of God would come to pass in our lives, in our families, in our church, and in our communities. So I'm wondering, did anyone get a chance to practice this over the last few weeks? Have you made any declarations? No? How did you know what to declare? You heard his voice? Is this audibly? Is it an impression? Through the, through the word of God. That's good. So last time I said, once you know what God's will is, your job is on earth as it is in heaven. When I was preparing for this, this message and this time together, every time I ask God, what do you want me to share? What do you want me to bring? What do the ladies need to know? What do you want to tell your beloved daughters tonight? And I heard him tell me two words, Kairos and Kronos. Now, let me explain. So have you ever heard the word Kairos or Kronos? Okay. So in Greek, there are two words for time. Kairos and Kronos. Now, Kronos is the word we get, like, chronological from. It's quantitative. It's the stopwatch time. It has beginning and an end. Kairos, on the other hand, is more of a qualitative word. And it has lots of different meanings. It could be a season of time. It could be the appointed time, the perfect time. Or we use it a lot in like Christianese lingo as like God's appointed time, right? A kairos moment. This is a time that God has appointed for his purposes. I want to first look at some of the biblical basis for a kairos moment. Luke 12, 54 to 56 says, Then Jesus told the crowds, When you see a cloud coming in from the west, you immediately say, There's going to be a storm. And that's what happens. When you see a south wind blowing, you say, It's going to be hot. And so it is. You hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. Yet you don't know how to interpret the present time. Kairos. This verse, Jesus is talking to a crowd of people. And he says, basically, you guys are really good at predicting the weather, at telling the time of the day, but you have the Son of God standing in front of you, and you can't even tell 
what spiritual season you're in. You're blind to it. So when I heard the word Kairos and Kronos, I felt strongly in my spirit that God wants to equip us to be discerners of spiritual seasons. And this is actually, this is a really critical thing to be today. Because if we can't discern the season, how do we know that we're partnering with God to fulfill what he wants to accomplish on the earth? Ecclesiastes 3.1, we've all heard this. There is a season for everything and a time for every event under heaven. Anyone want to sing the song? Now, that was even Old Testament. So that was Hebrew. That wasn't even the word kairos. But even in the Old Testament, the Bible is telling us that there is a time and a season that God's seasons rule on the earth. Mark 1.15 says, the time has come, Kairos, the kingdom of God has come near, repent and believe the good news. John 7.6 says, Jesus told them, my time, Kairos, has not yet come, but your time is always here. Jesus was talking about, it's, it's not yet my time to display who I am to the world. But he's using the word Kairos, because he's declaring that earthly events are governed by God's season and God's time. 2 Corinthians 6, 1-2 says, Since then, we are working with God. We plead with you not to accept God's grace in vain. For he says, at the right time, Kairos, I heard you. And on a day of salvation, I helped you. Listen, now is really the right time Kairos, now is the day of salvation. I think, I've talked about this before, how when there's translations, there's multiple meanings of word, but it all gets distilled to time. And I think we can kind of misinterpret verses when we don't know which time it's talking about. These are all Kairos verses. Romans 13, 11 to 12 says, this is necessary because you know the times. It's already time for you to wake up from sleep because our salvation is nearer now than when we became believers. The night is almost over. The day is near. He's talking about spiritual times, right? The spiritual time of night, the spiritual time of day. Let's therefore put aside the actions of darkness and put on the armor of the light. So what if I'm planting when I should be harvesting? God's looking around going, hello. It's time to harvest. The field is plentiful. The workers are few. What if I'm battling when it's time to rest, when it's time to stand back and see the salvation of the Lord? The Bible is full of strategies. It's full of amazing verses. But you know that every strategy doesn't apply to every situation. And every verse doesn't apply to every situation. You can't just pluck one out of the Bible and say that this applies. You have to be able to discern, does my spiritual situation or season align with this verse or this strategy? There's a discernment process there. And if I'm not in tune with what God is doing, I'm only naturally effective. When you are effectively co-laboring with God during his appointed Kairos time, magical things happen. Okay, it looks like acceleration. Like you were here and now you're here. It's a, a supernatural acceleration. It would be an outpouring of gifts of the Spirit. That would be a, a good example of what that could look like. It might be supernatural knowledge and ability. I like the example of Nehemiah. So after the Babylonians had destroyed the walls of Jerusalem, year after year after year, they were unable to, build, to rebuild these walls. It took Nehemiah 52 days. Why? It was God's appointed season. It was time. That was the work God had ordained 
for that season. And he was supernaturally effective, even though he didn't know anything about it. God equipped him to do that. And if you want to be supernaturally effective, we have to move in God's appointed time. Isaiah 43, 19 says, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? God is constantly doing a new thing. It's always new. History doesn't just constantly repeat itself with God. He's always doing a new thing. We're supposed to go from glory to glory, from revelation to revelation. We build. But first, we need to be able to perceive it so that we can partner with it, so that we can co-labor with God. How often, how often do you check the weather forecast? Three times a day. How about the time? How often are you looking at your wristwatch or your cell phone? All day long. Now, how often do you stop and try to discern what time it is spiritually? I do this a lot. I do this, you guys, I've done this at work. I might have, okay, I have a pretty technical job. And there are times where I'm like, man, I, in my natural brain, I don't know the answer to this conundrum. And I will ask, Holy Spirit, could you please give me this wisdom? Can you show me how to do this? Show me how to build this the right way. Show me what tools are going to work the best. Show me... And he does. He does. Like, it's really amazing how the Holy Spirit knows about, like, evaluation and research. I don't know. But somehow he can, he can equip you to do anything that you have to do. Anything. But how can we strike when the iron's hot if we're not checking the temperature gauge? So a couple weeks ago, do you remember when Pastor Josh went out to New Jersey? He was gone all week. And that meant it was me, myself, and I with a bunch of kids doing all the running, all the, th all the things. Okay. Now, about a year ago, I got COVID and lost my smell. And I realized about two weeks ago how important smell is for me as a, temp as a gauge. I didn't really realize, like, it's, a, it's pretty debilitating. Maybe not as bad as losing your sight <laughs> or <laughs> some other senses, but it is debilitating. And one of the things that I would do with my, with my scent is tell when anything was done in the oven. Like, I didn't use a timer. It just smells done. You take it out. Well, I've lost that. So here I was. I'm cooking. I had preheated the oven. But I couldn't smell that someone had put something in that oven. And there was plastic and chocolate and cereal. You don't want to know when I figured it out? When there were flames coming out of my oven at my legs. Okay. <laughs> when we are out of touch with the gauges, our spiritual gauges, it's the same way. We can be doing something good. Cooking dinner wasn't bad. It was a good thing. But <laughs> it could have, you know, not the impact that I wanted because I wasn't in tune with all of the gauges that I should have been checking. Now, I want to take a moment, and I'm going to read all of 1 Corinthians 2. And I want you to really think about these words. I want you to hear them deeply. It says, And so it was with me, brothers and sisters, when I came to you. I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony of God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness, with great fear and trembling. 
My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it. For if they had, they would have not crucified our Lord of glory. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things of God has, have prepared for those who love him. These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught to us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual realities with Spirit-taught words. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. The person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to mere human judgments. For who has known the mind of God as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Isn't that powerful? I mean, that's revelatory. If we can just grasp that we have the mind of Christ, that God has given us the Holy Spirit, and who searches out the deep things of God? The Holy Spirit. And who lives in us? The Holy Spirit. So what do we have? We have the mind of Christ. We just need to tap into it. We have divine wisdom, Holy Spirit-led wisdom, if we will only tap into it. Isaiah 45, 11, thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, ask me about the things to come concerning my sons, and you shall commit to me the work of my hands. We are allowed to ask God, hey, what's going to happen? And then our job is, on earth as it is in heaven, commit to God, commit to me the work of my hands. Can you comprehend that the Holy Spirit literally lives in you? And that if you want to, you can tap into the spiritual wisdom that comes from the mind of Christ. That's really powerful. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. As humans, we spend so much time like going down the rabbit, the rabbit trail of thoughts, right? Like justifying this and why did this happen? And, and we just get all circular and in our thought process. When we literally have the mind of Christ at our disposal and we're just not tapping into it. Learning how to tap into the mind of Christ is vital to accomplishing our mission as Christians. Why would any of us settle for human wisdom 
when we have supernatural wisdom at our fingertips. John 15, 15 says, No longer do I call you slaves, for the slave does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. When we talked last time about taking your place as an heir, about stepping into your role as priestess, it occurred to me that maybe some of us just need to step out of the slave quarters. No longer do I call you servants or slaves, for a slave doesn't know what his master's doing. I've called you friends, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to bring you in, I'm going to tell you those secrets because we're partners. We're going to labor together. The implication here is you are supposed to know what God is doing. You're supposed to be in the loop. And if you're not, I mean, kick off the shackles. What do we, what do we have to do here? You know, we're all dancing around. Have you seen this on, on YouTube? Holy Spirit, activate. Have you seen this? Ridiculous, right? He's activated. Why can't you perceive it? Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Can you not perceive it? And if you can't perceive it, why? I really think, I don't know if anyone else can feel this. It's, something's building. Spiritually, things are building. Something's coming to a head. There are things happening all over the world, all over the church. There's shifts. There's it's building, it's coming to a head. We are reaching a Kairos moment. And there are a lot of us that aren't going to have a clue. If the Son of God was standing in this room, would we perceive the time? Would we be any better? You know, the Holy Spirit speaks to people differently. We spent a lot of time last year talking about the Holy Spirit, talking about spiritual gifts, and how different people can perceive him. I believe that tonight, we're going to have an acceleration in this. We're going to have an acceleration of the Holy Spirit speaking to us, of us being able to tap in to the mind of Christ and discern those spiritual seasons. Now for me, oftentimes um, when the Holy Spirit speaks to me, it might be through a strong impression. It might just be a couple words, Kairos and Kronos. It could be audibly. Some people have visions, some people feel things, emotionally or physically. I feel like if someone says something, I can feel, was that from the Holy Spirit? It's a, it's a tingling sensation. Lots of ways that God can speak to you. And I want to emphasize that tapping in to the wisdom of Christ is not just a spiritual gift. It's not only for people with discernment. This is for every born-again Christian. We are no longer slaves. We are friends, and we are co-laborers, and he wants to show you what he's doing. He wants to pull you in. He wants you to partner. He's not trying to hide it from you. He wants you to find it. So what I want to do tonight It's just, is do an activation, is to just pray for the Holy Spirit to come and move and activate us to be discerners of the spiritual time for ourselves, our personal lives, our families, our church, our community. And then I want to have a time where we can just, we can share what we, we feel like he's saying. We'll see how this goes. So if you would like to receive, either stand if you feel like um, standing or just put your hands out. And we're going to believe for this activation tonight. 
Lord, we come before you and we just thank you. We thank you that we, we are heirs, we are co-heirs with Christ, that we are your beloved children, your beloved daughters, that no longer do you call us slaves or servants, but you've called us friends, and we receive that. We thank you, God, that you call us friends, that you pull us into the fold, that you want to disclose things to us, that you want to be, to be our friend and equip us to be effective co-laborers. God, we ask now through the power of your Holy Spirit that this would be a Kairos moment of acceleration. Holy Spirit, that you would pour out supernatural wisdom, that you would supernaturally equip us to tap in to the mind of Christ. Holy Spirit, your word, God, your word says that we just have to ask. Ask the Holy Spirit and he'll tell you. He'll tell you what's going on with his sons. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would bring to our mind exactly what you want us to know, that you would pull us in, that you would supernaturally give us this wisdom that we need to navigate spiritual seasons in our lives, in our families, in our workplaces, in our church. God, that you would reveal to us prophetically, give us words of knowledge, give us prophecies, give us an accurate reading of the spiritual season of the temperature gauge all around us. That we would not be so focused on the chronos, on the quantitative time, on the time of the day, on the weather, but that you would redirect our minds, that you would supernaturally right now redirect our pathways and our brains to tune us in to your frequency so that we will be able to discern the spiritual seasons of our lives and better co-labor with you. Lord, we receive that right now. We receive it and we thank you for it. And we thank you for the fruit that this is going to bring in our families, in our churches, in our personal lives. God, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. So if we could now just sit, sit in the presence of God for a few moments, quietly, and tune in. What do you feel? What do you sense? What do you hear? And in a few moments, I'll give you an opportunity to just share. Share what you feel. What do you hear God saying? What is he revealing to you? Thank you. 
So I feel the word like persevere. Wow, that is so awesome. Just what you taught on. It's it's like I've been pressing in for the last I don't know how long, Michael. Just that revelation of God and Holy Spirit and Jesus inside us much power that we have and just that revelation knowledge and, and uh, wisdom and understanding and just the things you're saying and um, yeah I mean just sitting there you know the Holy Spirit is it's like this quiet you know peace and I, I just saw this beautiful flower just a flower he a lot of times gives me images and uh, I saw the beautiful flower and then I was like okay Holy Spirit that's beautiful and then I saw a field of flowers. And what you said resonates with me because, you know, I'm like, oh, that's beautiful. And then I'm like, but okay, Holy Spirit, what? And then it's like the word growth. There's one flower, and then there's a field of flowers, and then there's growth. And I felt like he was saying, get ready for the growth. And so when you said that, I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> Holy Spirit, you are so cool. But it was like he said to me, get ready for the growth. And that might look different to some, you know, everybody. It might look different. But just like in flowers, that one flower, to have a field of flowers, you, you can't sit still. There's pre preparatory things. You do things. You water it. You nourish it. You give it things to grow. And then more flowers come. And so that big, you know, because then when he said growth, I said, okay, but Holy Spirit again, okay, so what else? Well, again, the same thing. That might look dip for, different for every person, but I believe that he's going to give that to you, each person. What does that growth look like for you? And so when she said that with the whole church feeling that, it, it, it's just confirmation, you know, because sometimes you don't want to speak out, you know, because I'm like, growth okay growth <laughs> but take that inside that word and say Holy Spirit what does that mean for me how can I grow how can I grow in my own walk how can I grow in my in our church and so that's what I got and I just I think he's such an awesome gentleman and he knows us better than we know ourselves 
So that's what I got. Um, I got a few things. Um, one of them, I was fair seas, and it was one of those that I kind of like dismissed, and I was like, okay, maybe that was just me. But um, no, but I got it. I kept getting it. So um, fair seas, and I was like, okay, and I thought of the story um, when Jesus calmed the storm, and I would see that as a fair sea. So we, a lot of us have come from a storm of some sorts, whether it be, you know, COVID or, you know, anything. But I believe that it was a prophecy of, of speaking um, fair seas for us, for in, in um, our own lives, but also for the church, fair seas. And then also um, righteousness was a word that came. And there's a, a verse that says, your righteousness will rise like the dawn or shine like the dawn. And that was another word that I've heard recently for the church is that the sun is rising and I feel like a dawn is coming. Like we're coming to the cusp of something, but like a dawn is coming for the church. There's a new day, a new dawn um, and, the, and righteousness in, in the church is, is just going to shine. You know, our righteousness is going to shine. There's going to be a new day. That's what I got. Anybody else got anything? Miss Helena. <laughs> so the word um, that came to my mind was fruit. Um, and I was trying to remember the verse <laughs> incomplete. But that um, just the constant thought that... Um, that the fruit, that our fruit, comes from identity. And it's not something we have to squeeze out of us. It just, you know, if we nurture ourselves and intimacy, which is another word, then the fruit will just come. So that's what I was thinking about. I have like a mishmash of things, but I'm going to try to focus. Um, one of the things, you mentioned COVID and she did too, and I feel that a lot of us feel that we've lost some time. You know, we've lost some years. We could have done so much, but we were shut down. And so God in his word says that he will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten. So anyone who feels they've lost years, they've lost time, they don't have any time left. There's not enough time to do what you want to do or your time has run out. We just pray restore. In his word, God says no one was praying restore. That's part of our job to just pray that everyone in this church would have that time restored to them. They wouldn't feel that they've lost anything. Because to God, it's all the same for him, past, present, future. He loses no time. And we have to learn how to live in that eternity that we're not. We haven't lost anything. We just have to keep going. So restoration of, of purpose, of momentum, and that acceleration that Pastor Emily was talking about. This is the time for God to do something quick. And we have to be ready. Like we were talking growth. Um, all these things that we want, we have to be ready for them. Because <laughs> if it comes and we're not ready, then we miss that moment too. So restoration and preparation, just getting in with the Lord and be ready for what he's going to do. Something is 
amazing. I love that growth and the flowers and I love that being restored. I really want to thank you. So I would love it if you guys are willing to partner up with someone and to go into another time of just seeking, seeking the Holy Spirit for that person to see if anything comes to mind. No pressure. If nothing comes to mind, it's okay. If you say something crazy, it's okay. But let's just spend a few moments, maybe partner up with someone you don't normally partner with, and see what the Holy Spirit has to say. And that can just be an intimate time. You're not going to have to <laughs> pass the mic. Just hang out with your with your partner Thank you. 